Uh, good evening. You know what? I... Sure, I'll do this. Uh, yeah, we can do this. Do you want? Do you re hold on? Do you really want to do this? How? What's your motivation behind this? I'm fine. Well, to do it. I'll yes. I'll yes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want you to know. I'll yes and this for you, because that's a lot. You're doing a lot right now. That's this is a heavy commitment on your part, and and yeah, I appreciate I the commitment. Oh, hold, 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 hold. I appreciate the commitment that you're putting behind this, but. And so I'll match it if you're if you if you're willing to commit fully to it, I'll match the commitment level as well. But I'm just giving you this disclaimer. I'll let you have it, baby. Now my name's Matilda. I'm about sixty-five years old, and for twenty years, he beat me. He was more committed than me. I didn't want to do that at all. Call from Gabby. Text. Gabby. Hi, hi, Gag. What's up? You know, not a whole lot, honestly. Okay, not a so ton. this is funny. I think this is the night of Jews telling sin stories. Can you say that again now? Okay, can you say that again? Because I can't. My frick. I hate this audio thing. You said this is the night of Jews. Telling sin stories. We're all Jews here, aren't we? I'm a little Jewish, yes. I'm, I, you know, yeah. I might be Jew. I might uh, so, you know, be Jewing it up now and yeah, then. Yeah, I got, I got ancestry DNA. Like, you know, my DNA tested. It came back 100% Ashkenazi Jewish, and I was like, "Fuck, bro." Gabby, how have you sinned? I had sex in a church and a synagogue, so I've crossed those bases. Which which was the better sex, the synagogue sex or the church sex? Um, dude was circumcised because he was Jewish, so I'd say that. Nice. So the circum the 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 synagogue one. Oh yeah. Um, you know, bathroom, very romantic. How did you meet this uh, this this Jewish man? So his name was Josh, and we went to the same synagogue, and the rest is history. And he got herpes from my friend afterwards, and I thought he gave it to me, but he didn't. So he had sex with you and your friend. Yeah. How how close how closely? How close did we have sex to each other? <laughs> like wh how when? What, 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 give me, give me the, give me the, give me the timeline of this. All right. Well, I was sixteen, and it was, I was a few weeks between each other when he fucked us. Who, 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 who first? Me. So, so did she you gave, gave her him any, her like, tips going into it? No, he didn't have a tip. He was circumcised. No, I mean like tips like No, I, I yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't he I didn't know it was going on. He was talking to both of us. He was kind of playing it. What's your favorite part about being Jewish? Um, well, my parents disowned me for getting tattoos. That's not my favorite. That just came to mind first. Um, I'm not very religious. Actually, I like connecting with other Jews that aren't Jewish, too, because I feel like that's a very good connection to make. You like connecting with other people who aren't Jewish. Who are Jewish, but they don't consider themselves Jewish. How do your parents feel so, about the fact that you don't consider yourself Jewish? Like, how Jewish are they? Are they really Jewish? Nah, we grew up reformed. The last time I went to the synagogue was when I got bat mitzvahed. 
Well, what actually, the theme that's, of your bar mitzvah? Oh, that's not true. I guess I had sex, but that was for another bar mitzvah. I went out. You had 16. sex at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the that's where it, it was during a bar mitzvah at a synagogue. I should have mentioned that when I was sixteen. Um, Why were you at a bar mitzvah when you were sixteen? It was my family friend's bar mitzvah. You know, during the service, things got a little bored. You know, oh wait, like, you had sex. Elohim et you had sex. Like, oh, you oh. had sex with with someone in the synagogue during the their bar mitzvah service. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little anxious, if you couldn't tell. I'm nervous, but this is breaking up my monotonous life, and I appreciate you for that. Uh, you know what, Gabby? I'm happy what? that I'm happy that I could be here, you know, as the receptor for this story. Because I mean, I can tell that this story had to go somewhere, and it made its it made its home, you know, my ears. Well, I, I very appreciate it. Okay, how did this how did this logistically go down? The sex in the in the bar mitzvah service? Yes. I mean tell me every aspect of this story. Okay, alright. Let's start. Okay, so Josh, I've known he went to we went to preschool together in the same synagogue. So you know, it's a long time coming kind of thing. No pun intended. Um and you know, 16 year olds, you gotta do what you gotta do. We, you know, we're friends, we're texting, you know, all that. Hey, are you going to, I, mean, I don't really wanna name the name of the bar mitzvah I was at. You going to, you know, the bar mitzvah? Yeah, yeah, let's let's sit next to each other. Um, let's uh, watch, you know, together. And then, you know, we went to the bathroom. Um, you know, the one that was far away, not the one that was, you know, close to the bima. The I, I don't know the terms anymore, honestly. But far away. And, um, yeah, the rest is history. Was it in the bathroom? Yeah. The men's bathroom it was or the a, women's it was bathroom? A, was it he was wearing a, a keypod during it? <laughs> I actually, yeah, he was because we were in the no, service. No, what the fuck? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, we were in the service. You didn't take it off. I mean, that's heavy. It was in the handic- right It was in a, It was in a handicap stall, so there's there's enough room for us. Guys, whoever's saying I'm not underage, I'm turning 21 October 4th. <laughs> Don't read the chat. It, it does it, 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 who cares about, you know, who's watching this? Yeah, well, I think Jude goes to, like, Michigan, so. <sighs> All right, Gag. <laughs> What's your Wait, favorite when, part about being Jewish? My favorite part about being Jewish is that I don't know what my favorite part about being Jewish is. I like the I like the soups and the salads that we get. Oh yeah, matzo. You like the dense matzo balls or the softer ones? I like the softer ones, you know, because oh, I'm a little. Oh really? Wow. Yes. You need your mommy to chew it up for you too. She did. My mom, boy, what? When I was younger, my mom used to, um, you know, eat matzo balls and chew them up and then spit them back into my mouth like a bird. Mm. In fact, um, she still does that sometimes when we have dinners together for the Jewish holidays. Just for nostalgia. Oh yeah, for Passover, for when you dip your finger in the wine, she just does it with your tongue into your mouth or her tongue into your mouth. You know what? Yes. <laughs> What's your prize when you find the Afi Komen? Ten dollars. That's it? Yes. You know what my mom used to do? She would... Tell me what your mom make, used to do. She would make each kid in the family an Afi Komen, like, cover bag, you know. A special cloth 
and then she'd give us like a little square of the cloth that we were supposed to find and she would hide one afikoman for each child so everyone could find it that ruins the competitive nature of finding the afikoman and creates a world in which there are no winners and no losers, which is not realistic depiction of the world in which there are clear winners and clear losers. Oh, I thought it was sweet. <laughs> well, Gabby, you know, look, thank you for confessing your sins. Thank you for letting me know, you know, how terrible you are so that it makes me feel better about myself. And, um, you know, look, I love you. I don't think that our love, love is powerful too, enough to rise us from the depths of hell, but I think it will comfort us as we burn down here and for eternity. All right, appreciate it, man. All right, Gabby, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Hello. 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 How's it going? You know, it's going all right. What, um, you ever been to, what are you, what are you doing right now? Um, I just got home and I'm, I'm laying on my couch. Where, where, home from where? Home from, I got, I got home from, uh, from going to dinner with my family. I, I recently shaved off my hair and my eyebrows and had never seen it and when I went there they told me I looked like a serial killer and I was very flattered you were flattered does that is that was that your goal did you want to look like a serial killer yeah I work at a haunted house so uh so yeah it's a, it's a compliment when I get told that I look um on on out of the ordinary That's good. Do you so yeah. you you kind of get off? You kind of receive, you kind of enjoy the idea of of looking frightful. Exactly. Because it's beneficial because it's beneficial for you in your career because your career is to frighten people. Yeah, it's great. What do you enjoy about frightening people? What 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 gives you pleasure in doing that? I think it's cool that like at a full-time job you always get those people like especially like in the restaurant industry or like any kind of service where you get those people that are just so mean and you just got to keep a smile on your face but when you're there you can just like yell and scream at people just get out all of that anger and they think it's fun and then you get your uh yeah good time yeah i do that sometimes i try to i yell at people scream good, good. try to scare people i like that well, what do you, where, where do you do that just out in public or well, out in public i do it on the stream i you know well let me ask you something okay do you have a signature like sound do you have a signature like growl Ooh, that's actually very funny because um, there's this kid that I work with, um, and he thinks he invented the uh, the snarl, the <laughs> kind of snarl, and and it's very funny to hear him talk about it because he thinks he's absolutely everything, and I just sit there and just kind of listen. It's more of a psychology project than anything because I don't like the kid but I hang out with him to get inside of his head and see how he's thinking. It's a lot wait, of fun. Uh, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> you... I know, there's a lot of information. All right, so this is a coworker of yours. Yes. And you, and you, th and you don't like him because he thinks he's the shit and that he invented the snarl. Yeah, he Which thinks... Which we all know he... he did not invent the snarl. Yeah, he he acts as if he's the center of attention. But so, but you give him attention and be his friend because you want in on the site. You 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 want to know what he's doing. You want to know what he's thinking. Exactly. What does this thirst for knowledge come from? Why do you um, want to know so I badly? Mean, 
it comes from the fact that I, I really like just about everybody and I try to give everybody a chance and I tried to give him a chance and then when I went over to his house I kind of realized how much of a pompous person this man is and so in turn I decided you know what I'm not going to mention to him that he sucks I'm going to take all of the all of the lies and all the the hateful rumors that he's spreading and instead I'm going to repeat them back to the people that he's spreading them about and then at the end of the year <laughs> we're going to we're going to see what happens if he makes it What do you mean if he makes it? Cuz the other day um I work I work at I work uh, in this area with chainsaws and he bought his own chainsaw so that he can do all sorts of things like revving it really loud and all that kind of stuff which is really bad for it and so um the other day I caught him swinging at like 2 feet in front of customer spaces which is a little bit of a an issue <laughs> because if that drops on somebody then it's the haunted houses issue. And so it's yeah, it's also most... that person's issue, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's been told multiple times not to do that, not not only by like me, but by the other like heads of like um training and he continues to do it and so they're threatening to to basically let him not use his chainsaw and he said that if they take away his chainsaw he's just going to quit. So yeah. Um yeah, this is terrifying. What what How how many This is this this is I might be the most warnings anyone has ever gotten to not throw a chainsaw at people. At people. Yes. Welcome to haunted house season. It's a lot. <laughs> Especially now I think because I think I what wait, so you're telling me this man is swinging a a live chainsaw 2 feet in front of people. Yeah, and without the blade. Warned, All right, if you do that yeah. again, then you get a strike. And then if you do it uh, if you throw if you shove a chainsaw in someone's face a second time, we give you a second strike. And if you get 5 strikes, we're taking away your chainsaw. basically yeah so like well so he's had a talk with um it's been two talks now with like the head of like the the security training chainsaw team he's had two talks with them about this issue and i sat in there or, like i sat in his area and watched him do his scare him knowing that i'm there and i saw him do it like and commented on it like five other times and he still continued to do it because I Wait, I'm sorry, you say the did. chainsaw training team? Yeah. There's, there's an like, entire there's like team for tra- there's yeah. an entire team that just does chainsaws. There's there's one guy and then like security that kind of watches over, but it's mainly just like the one the one guy. I'm so bad. How the fuck has he gone this long able to do this? Like that's that, that I have no I almost, idea. I, almost, I don't not like him and I mean he's a fucking crazy person but I, the management everyone in everyone involved in this haunted I never everyone involved in this haunted house is insane. What the hell are they doing? How do they, how are they allowing this to happen? Well, it's like you guys going to rip someone him, in half. Exactly. Well, we told him he could do it and like there's no like chain on it which is like the good part. but we told him he could do it if he's standing far enough away from people like at least 10 feet and standing like against like a building that way like you can at least be stable when doing it 
but he well, you said there's no chain. Is there a blade? Them. No. There's so there's like a there's like the metal part. But there's no like actual saw, like turning saw. So if it hits, if let's say he hits someone, are they gonna fucking die? Are they gonna get cut? If, if he hits somebody, he could seriously hurt somebody. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna socially sort of high school drama this man out of murdering people with a chainsaw. Yeah, and you know what's funny about this? This this man is almost in his 30s, yet still talks shit like a high schooler. And well, most he, of he it holds a chainsaw like a man in his 30s. Yeah, tell this man to social distance. I will. Oh, I will. Okay, so your grand plan... Can I give you a different... Can I suggest a different grand plan? Of course And look, can. I know you're gonna do what you're gonna do, but... <laughs> can I suggest, uh... Alerting the highest power possible within the haunted house chain of command? Uh, about oh, a person... Of course. Um, you know, throwing a live chainsaw around to people that he shouldn't be doing. I, I think yeah. you should do that. I think that I, I would, I think that that would be a much more prompt and effective solution over, um, sp spreading rumors about this guy. Oh yeah, no. And it's, it's definitely not like me spreading rumors about him. It's him spreading rumors about other people that I just kind of sit there and listen on. But I definitely like mention it to you the are you're other you're concerningly unconcerned with the chain you're concerningly unconcerned with the chainsaw aspect of of this it's, situation. It's very strange. It's like I I do know that like because he's been doing it for years. Like we've we've been doing this line of work for years. So like. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, scare me that he doesn't know what he's doing, because I know that he knows what he's doing, and he's done it for the years prior. But it's just, like, he continues to do the wrong thing, especially now, since there's all these guidelines and restrictions and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's, yeah, so it's just getting to a point where it's like, now he's starting to get really testy with it. He's kind of testing the limits on how close he can get. How, yeah, how scary he can try to act. How over the top he can try to be. Yeah, I, um, you know, I don't like this guy either. I'll say I, it. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't like him. And he has just been, like, consistently, like, he told me, he told me something about, like, my boss, that he made my boss, like, somebody who I've known for, like, two years, he told me that he made him cry at auditions and that he's known him for years, although he couldn't even mention to me his name because he didn't know it. What does someone have to do to make the owner of a haunted house cry? I have no idea. This man just told me he, he came up with some, like, he told me some, like, bullshit one-liner that I said in my, like, first year haunting. It's nothing special. And then he told me that that made him cry. And I was like, I don't know what kind of jaded reality you live in, but that is just, <laughs> that is the absolute opposite of the truth. I'm loving discovering how much like high school drama clubs haunted houses are <laughs> oh it's fantastic we can get into it sure i don't i don't i i think i think that would have to be an entire week of streams to to uncover all these stories but um you let me know like a date and a time we'll, we'll plan something i'll like I'll, like, call in. We'll, we'll make it, like, a podcast where we just talk about haunted house drama and what crazy things go on in the haunt community. 
Oh, I'd love to hear that. Maybe on uh, maybe on Halloween. I would love that. What'd you say your name was? Um, I'm just gonna go with Charles. We we talked before, but since I've I've disclosed some information, I'm gonna say my name is Charles. Well, all right, Spooky Charles. Uh, thank you, thank you for calling in and sharing that with us. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Take take care and uh, stay away from live chainsaws. I will definitely try my my heart. Please do. All right, man. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah, that guy's a psychopath. The chainsaw man. That's the most dangerous theater kid of all time. That's how that's how bad it can get, ladies and gentlemen. And next time you see someone killing it at a high school play or a high school musical or whatever, they could one day turn into a 30-year-old chainsaw wielding man and kill people. Call from Rebecca. Rebecca, I need you to help me. Oh my god. Okay. Wait, why are you? Why are you? Um. Because <laughs> I didn't think you answered you see, it first. You see, you seem a little flustered. You seem a little flustered. A little bit. It's been a while since I, I give, talked to you. I can give you some time. You, you, oh, you're you okay. Want some time? You sure. Yeah, you're right. I've talked to you before. This is my second time talking to you. What um, what did we talk about before? I painted a bird bath. It was like a mushroom. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I remember this. You painted a bird bath. I did. For, for, for the I, birds. I finished it. Are the birds bathing in it right now? It's still in my kitchen. <laughs> what, what would you do if you saw birds? You know how there's like make out hill or whatever? Mm-hmm. What would you do if your bird bath became a central hub for birds in your area to have forbidden sex? Would you be alright with that, or would you? <laughs> yeah, as long as they pay that? admission. Yeah, I'm totally fine with it. You're not concerned with the moral implications of it. No, I mean if they're being safe about it. No. <laughs> if they're, what does it mean to be safe about it? <laughs> I mean, as long as they're not. Making a bunch of baby birds in my house. <laughs> you know what you could do? What? You could provide a little dispenser or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Free, free, uh, free bird condoms. <laughs> tiny little, uh, for a for cute little tiny little bird penis. <laughs> Do birds actually have those? Say it again? Do, the, do birds actually have like teeny tiny little <laughs> Well, they're definitely, they gotta be, well, they're, well, okay, so birds are smaller than humans, so their mm -hmm. penises would, would, um, I guess proportionally be smaller than that of a human penis. Yeah, that's true. Um. <laughs> do they probably have smaller penises. <laughs> now, what would, now, what would you do if, um, it got all right. So all right. So you start letting birds have sex in your backyard, but then, mm -hmm. but then your backyard becomes known as a place where all sin is on. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with the birds? So then, you know, people, <laughs> so then, okay. So then people are like, well, well, okay. Why don't we go? Why don't we start dealing drugs here? And then this becomes kind of the spot. You know, this becomes kind of the the birdbath street corner. Yeah, where, I mean, to be honest, that's bath. not that's not too far from how my parking lot is. <laughs> would you would you would you try to take a cut? Oh, drug money? No. Yeah. What if it What if it was a more of like a brothel situation? 
<laughs> where I don't... people... <laughs> what? You know. Kind people, of a free for all. Where male birds paid to, or, or female birds. Where people mm -hmm. paid to have sex with, with not well, not people. That would actually be pretty bad if people <laughs> came to the bird bath and paid you money to have sex with your birds. So that yeah, that's where we cross the line. That would be yeah, that would be that would cross the line. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? You can <clears throat> ask me anything you want. Rebecca. How are you? How have you been? It's been a while since I've watched your stream. Uh, I'm okay. I'm alright. <laughs> you, know. you don't sound too confident in that answer. What is confidence, really? Where has confidence got me? It's got Confidence has gotten me here, Rebecca. It's gotten me talking to you wearing a giant green gecko costume in the middle of New York City. I like it. I mean, you ever been in New York City? It's not too far off. <laughs> you think I could just walk around the streets in New York like this? Yeah, I would. Why not? <laughs> Nobody paid me any attention. Maybe that'll <laughs> happen. Maybe that's maybe that's what's going. Maybe that's that's what's next for me is to what, is to do that. You actually like live walking through New York City. This is true. You should. I don't think anyone's gonna care. That's probably not the strangest thing I've ever seen in New York City. Well, it's happening, Rebecca. I'm doing it. Okay. I'm going in. I would love to see that. I'm actually painting my nails green just because you gave me the inspiration for green today. I'm I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy <laughs> to hear that I, I was able to inspire. Rebecca. Hmm. You seem, you seem like you got a good life, and um, <laughs> and I love you to to the moon and the stars, Ooh. and um, and uh, I, you know, good luck with your bird bathing business. <laughs> and, um, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Good night, Rebecca. Hey, good night. <laughs> Do you like hentai? I used to, when I was, um, I've grown out of hentai, but I really liked, when I like, when I was like in middle school, and I first kind of started getting into porn, I, I was into hentai. Like, I would Google search, like, Samus Aaron from Brawl, from Super Smash Brothers naked. But I, but not since, no. Call from... James.
James, what? How long were you in the dark before? How long were you in the dark before that? It's about ten, fifty. Yeah, probably about maybe an hour or two. I'm just here sitting on my computer. Just, what were you doing in the dark? I, <laughs> I'm just here at my computer. Why would I? I just trying to avoid wasting as much electricity as I need. I don't need to really see all that much. God damn it. Do you know the big corporations out here using up all of our petroleum and shit have convinced you that you need to suffer and sit in the dark for our environment. It's really right. it's really it's really just sad. I I don't think it's environment. We should just fucking just try to avoid wasting money. Helps me not get yelled at. I think lights should be free. That's how God intended it. That would be awesome if they were free. I swear, every time I turn on this, like, lamp on my desk, I feel like I'm throwing $100 down the drain. I don't think it should cost that much to turn on your lamp. But that's just me. I don't, I don't think it is. I just assume it is. Hey, there's a fucking parade. Check that out. You see this? You see this parade? They're, what are they parading for? Where's the band? I want a band in the parade. I want a, I want a, I want a band. You know, I want a band in the parade too. That'd be pretty epic. I mean, what are they even parading for? Is it like, I'd be pretty. I think they're all pink balloons, so maybe cancer. I don't know. That's a good guess. You're good. Oh wait, no. You know what? They're all. I think shit. They're turning blue now. Fuck. I don't know. Maybe it's. I mean, there's a there's a blue cancer. Is it, is it is that like for guy cancer or something? Uh, well now there's green. Hey, there's it's green. Hey, it's it's for it's for gecko cancer. It's for gecko cancer. <laughs> Spread awareness. Um, d yeah, of that. Not many people know about it because it doesn't exist. And I. I think that something not existing is not a good excuse for people to not be aware of it. I, I'd imagine there's there'd be some sort of, like, cancer in geckos, because, like, you know, dogs could get cancer, you know? Now I'm thinking about dogs with cancer, James. I'm, I'm thinking sorry. About you. Now, I, now I'm thinking about you sitting in your dark basement thinking about dogs with cancer. It, it's not dark anymore, but yeah. Can you turn the light back off? Yeah, give me a moment. Okay, the light's back off. James. Yes? I think that a dog having cancer is very sad. It is very sad. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about the family that loved the dog, you know. Uh, my, um, one of my mom's is, uh, best friends, 
I think her dog, it might have been cancer, it might have been something else. I think it was cancer because he was struggling to like drink and eat. He wouldn't eat very much. You know, I was kind of depressing with her or that whole ordeal. from Liz Liz Yes What are you what are you doing right now? Um I'm laying in bed. Do you think are you are you ridiculous? Probably not. Interesting. Pretty conventional. What I mean, what's the least ridiculous thing about you? What do you think is the most normal thing that you do? Um. God, what's the most normal thing? I don't. I like trash TV. Is that? What is trash TV? Like reality TV. Is that like normal to a lot of people? Like I'm obsessed with 90 Day Fiance. Do normal, I guess that's pretty normal. For like white girls it is. But that's the most normal thing that you do? Well, like, I guess it depends what you mean by normal. Like, I breathe and I eat. That's pretty normal. That is pretty normal. I would say that that's more normal than watching TV. Yeah. So in a way, what is so maybe do you think that per, watching trash TV is maybe the most ridiculous thing that you do? No. What is the most ridiculous thing that you do? I don't do anything ridiculous. I don't know. You know, Liz. Like everything I do is pretty normal. I was thinking about this the other day. I think it might be possible that someone can be so normal. That someone can be that's so... Ridiculous. Yeah, that it's it's almost a little ridiculous how normal you are. Yeah, it's just hard because anything that I would have done that would seem like odd is just like... Can't do it with COVID. Alright, what's the worst... What is the... What, 
Okay, what what ridiculous thing would you want to do if you had COVID? If you if there was no COVID? I don't know. Before COVID, I was I was taking some burlesque classes and I learned how to tassel twirl. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, I guess I still technically can. But I can't pursue that avenue of performance. I mean, well, I mean I'm not can, a big. Well, I mean, you don't need to. I mean, do you, ever, do you ever just do that, like, just alone? Yeah. That's a little ridiculous to just tassel twirl in your house alone. I've only done that, like, once. The, the frequency me, is irrelevant. Let me tassel. So because of that one instance, I am now ridiculous. I'm not. Gonna, no, I'm just saying that that is that one instance is my is a ridiculous thing that you have done. Mhm. Mm so, Liz, I want you to know that if you wanted to, and it doesn't sound like you want to. But you could be ridiculous. I could be. Yes. What What are you doing right now? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to eat for dinner. So this is This is what I wanted to talk to you about. So. Um. I've been talking to this guy, met through Tinder, but he seems like really insecure about his body and is on some weird like grilled chicken hype. Or I guess he eats like exclusively grilled chicken. And um, he's coming over and like bringing his fucking chicken. But I just want pizza. But he's like so insecure about himself that I feel like really uncomfortable eating pizza around him. Uh, yeah, I think I don't think you should go on a date with this guy. Well, he's like it's not really a date. We're gonna just watch a documentary. I guess it's kind of a date, modern date. I, I don't think you should see this guy because you already because I think that because I think that if you disagree with him on something as you know sort of silly well, it's not as chicken, like I, think like that... I don't. He wants to be healthier, and like I want to support that. But at the same time, like, I've also had my own body issues, and I feel like him constantly talking about it and, like, bringing his fucking chicken over is just, like, making yeah, me feel bad about Liz, myself. you're already mad at this guy. You, have, you haven't even met this guy yet, and you're already no, pissed I've off at him. No, I've met him before. You already don't like him, and you... Why would you go on a date with this guy? You clearly don't like him. Because I'm lonely. That's not a good enough reason, though. Is it? No. I think you hate this grilled chicken, man. I can tell in your voice that you really do not like this guy. I think that you yeah. can find a different thing to do to help your loneliness than to go on dates with people that you don't like. Do you have any friends? I don't know. How? Like, see, this is this is you know the even bigger problem though. I just moved to this new place. And I literally don't have friends. I have roommates that are international and like actively ignore me. And it's COVID. What? Do you have any hobbies? So, like the only people I've met have been on Tinder. Do you have any hobbies? I have hobbies, yeah. But you, like, do burlesque. Solo you do burlesque. You do burlesque. You do burlesque. Yeah. Start a burlesque club in your city and do burlesque. Um, um, do like socially, socially distanced, distanced uh, burlesque club, and then when you're the head of burlesque club, you're gonna uh, meet all these other burlesque dancers, and you're gonna become friends with them. Okay. That's by the way, that's an actual suggestion. That's I feel like I've I I actually, I actually do believe that the key to making friends is to starting clubs, because um you literally you go to meetup.com and you start a burlesque group and you go on Facebook and shit, and then that'll be your friends. I would do that instead how do, of going how do you on dates with friends? guys that you um, hate who have grilled chicken. You, so you start your own club? Yes. Okay. 
Liz? Yep. I wish you good luck. And I and I and Thank I you. and I think that you should do that. I think you know. Look, it'll be look. It's wait. Look, I'm gonna look. Hanging out with grilled chicken guy way easier than starting a burlesque club. Hundred percent. But you're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate every second of it because you hate this guy so much. And you hate him and you hate his chicken. And you want him to die. I can tell. I can tell that you are actively wishing for this man's death. And I think that instead of doing that. You should start a burlesque club and make new friends. Even in COVID yeah. era. There's a genuine... If, I, I, know, I, know it's, I know that this is ridiculous. There's a gecko man on the internet telling you to do this, but I actually genuinely think you should do it. Because I think you will make new friends in this new area. Alright, I'll give it a shot. Alright, Liz, gecko. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. I love you too. Good night. Call from... Logan. Logan. Yo, Therapy Gecko. What's up, Logan? Did I get through? Am I live on the stream? It doesn't matter whether who's live on the stream. We're just, well, I'm not, you know, I mean, I, we can do this. We can just be in a right. room. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, hey, it's probably more comfortable for me if we're just in a room, but... I kind of know I'm live on the stream because I was just watching the stream before I called about five minutes ago. So I'm glad to be on the stream. But anyways, how's it going? Are you ridiculous, Logan? You asked that to the last guy, the captain. That's the last one I was listening to. Um, I think there are many ways that I'm ridiculous. I'm not trying to be ridiculous right now. So I hope you're, I'm not coming across that way. No, that's fine. Look, if you're trying... Well, what do you what what are you like when you are trying to be ridiculous? Let's say you wanted to actively be ridiculous. Um, I think some of the things that I do can be considered ridiculous. Like, for example, um, you know the the reason I'm calling you tonight might be ridiculous. Um, What's the reason you're calling me tonight? So the reason I'm calling you is I don't even know. Like, is this are you like? Do you really give therapy and advice? Because everything I've seen was people prank calling or like you just kind of struggling with people. But I've never really seen much of your show. Do you, or is this real? Like, are people really supposed to call for advice from the therapy gecko? Because that's what I'm doing. That is that what this is supposed to be about? You know, I've always, I feel like there's not there is no such thing as anything that there is that this is supposed to be. I can appreciate that. So, what I think it should be is. Uh, People who would never actually go to therapy and would rather call a guy dressed like a gecko on the internet and do therapy with him. That's what I think it should be about. So that's what I want it to be about for me. So my question to my therapist gecko is um, about this relationship that I'm in, right? Uh, just kind of starting out with this girl who I'm really attracted to um, physically and somewhat emotionally but the difficulty I'm having is that she almost seems to have no personality uh, but I don't believe that she doesn't have a personality I think maybe she's just really shy and kind of nervous because we've only been talking to each other for a relatively short period of time so how do I know if I should continue to invest my time and energy with this human being who maybe doesn't even have much of a personality at all. And I think that from our short conversation, you can tell that I'm interested in people and interested in people who have some substance to them. So how do I That's know what I'm doing? Question. Yeah. So you don't, you, so you feel like this person might have some substance to them, but that they just haven't revealed it to you yet because you are too shy. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I mean, there's something other than the physical attraction that's really attractive here. And I don't know exactly what that is. And so I kind of want to put in the effort, but I don't know if it's worth it. Because, you know, I've been talking to her for, like, two months, let's say, on the phone. Mostly we've met, like, a handful of times because of the whole COVID thing. We, we like, you know, haven't really met much. 
but we've spent quite a bit of time on the phone, but I'm constantly carrying the conversation. And that's not, that's not really common for me in the first place, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, you know, uh, honestly, yeah, I, th- I, I, I actually do think that, um, you know, if, if she's not like, how much do you value openness in the people that you talk to? Big time. Huge. If she's not displaying that, then it sounds like she's not displaying the trait that you value. And then, uh, I mean, if you talked a lot, if, I mean, how, if you've been talking for like days on the phone and you've met in person and you still feel like they haven't revealed that, something to you, then they might just be shy, which is yeah. like fine on them. But I mean, you do seem like you're very interested in people and it does seem like you're carrying a brunt of the conversation. I don't see why you should expect that to change, you know? Yeah. I think that there, there, I think that there is like a lot that you can gleam out of first impressions. You know, more more than you could give than I feel like you're giving credit to. Yeah, I, I'm kind of worrying that that's exactly what's happening. Well, I, mean, I don't think you should be worried. I mean, it's just you know, well, the date. I mean, I mean, worried about... I mean, look at the end of the day, if if you're just physically attracted to this person, then you know, I mean, you you don't have to date them as long as you're you're clear about your intentions and their her intentions match up with yours and everyone's on the same page. Mm-hmm. You know, you could you could yeah. set that up. Yeah, but I'm I'm not interested in that like at all. Like oh. I want a real relationship. Um, but yeah, what I mean when I say that I'm worried about, I'm worried that I that 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 might be what I'm doing. And you kind of mentioned that you know, there's no real reason that I would expect I should expect them to change if that's if they're kind of showing me who they are. Um, and I feel yeah, like I, I, might, think... I might be secretly kind of hoping that this is gonna change over time and i i honestly believe that it might but i don't know i don't know dude i almost i almost feel like this is like a microcosm for even something that would happen like later in relationships you know where you're like yeah so you're like dating someone and you're like well once i marry them i can change this about them or like maybe if i wait they'll change you know i mean this probably happens yeah. to people who are like you know deep into relationships Mm-hmm. And it's just like mm-hmm. you're 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 projecting your expectations onto this person as opposed to seeing them for who they're showing you who they are showing to you themselves to be yeah which i think might be um an accurate an accurate criticism to how i maybe approach relationships generally i think that mm-hmm. i think that might be accurate yeah but i mean look keep it's good i think it's good that you know what you want you know what you mm-hmm. value. That's a more. That's more than a lot of a lot of people can say. You know. Mm-hmm. So like, look look out for that. Look out for like when you're having conversations with people. You know, this is good. This allows you to filter out through people quickly who you might not be compatible with, and it's good for her too because, you know, she doesn't want to waste her time. You know, you you don't want to waste her time. You mm-hmm. know, if you guys aren't compatible, you're not compatible. You don't have to keep waiting. You know. So I would just keep going on on more dates and, and and eventually, you know, through sheer frequency, you will find someone who who matches up with with what you're looking for. Yeah, hopefully, it's tricky. It's, uh, it's tricky for all all of all of the stars to align. You know, it's really tricky because I've been with um, several. You know, I've been uh, single for about two, maybe two years. Two or two and a half years, let's say, and I've dated quite a bit, and I've tried to kind of expand my horizons uh, with who I'm dating, and you know, give a more broad uh, fish with a bigger net, let's say. And um, yeah, you're trying to open up your um, sort of what what it is you are looking for. You know, the yeah. type of person, you know, you yeah, want to be more open like with give, type people. Give more mean. people the opportunity to try and, you know, to see what, yeah, to give, like, you know. Because I think before, um, in my in earlier in life, I was very specific as to what I thought I wanted. And I wouldn't really date anyone outside of that kind of demographic, let's call it. Um, so recently I've been trying to, like, you know, give, give more of a, a chance to everyone to see if maybe I do like things that maybe I didn't think that I would. And, you know, what I found was that 
there's been a few people that I get along with and click with and mesh with personality wise, but the physical aspect is missing a lot of the time. Sure. And it, it may sound superficial to say it, but like with this girl, like the physical is there, like 100% for both of us. Like we're both super attracted to each other. And I think it's more than just the physical. Like there's, there's obviously more than that because I've also been with people that were like gorgeous and like it was just physical and it didn't work. Like my heart wasn't in it and it was just not happening. Like I couldn't even continue it. Like even just as like friends with benefits type of thing, I'm just not interested. And that may not be common to hear from a guy, but it's the case. Um, so, you know, I'll also, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. This might be an unpopular opinion. I don't think that there's anything wrong with valuing physical attraction. I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. inherently wrong with valuing physical attraction. Um, so, you know, I mean, but, but it also sounds like I, I, I still, I wouldn't hold out for this. Per I, I feel like, though, I do feel like, you know, physical, if all you value is physical attraction, that's not going to be conducive to a long term. Yeah. Relationship. But yeah, but I'm saying that there must be, even though I don't really know what it is and can't really put my, my finger on it, there is certainly more than just physical here but i don't know exactly what that is but and, and i am somewhat bothered by the one-sidedness of the whole social interaction type of like the whole conversation and you know i'm put off by that but yeah i don't know it's not it's not only physical like she's a really good person you know like she's a I mean, someone could be a cool person and you know you can like who they are but they're not necessarily <laughs> romantically compatible with you yeah all right well yeah that's cool i think you um definitely confirmed a lot of stuff more than so, yeah, you so i mean we can do we can do so anyway yeah we can do that or we can do you know fart and voices and shit that's i yeah. guess that's the stream <laughs> interesting very interesting do your streams stay up forever on your profile uh yeah well i stream on reddit and then i stream on um on twitch that's where i mainly have been doing my streams it's an interesting dynamic the streaming i've done it a couple times myself just to see what it is and um i think a lot of what it is is just People looking like I think it's a lot of what it what streaming is aside from the whole like people like selling their bodies and doing video games I think a lot of it is just people looking for some kind of social outlet like nerds and introverts looking for a social outlet it definitely can be I mean I mean I guess that's the name of the subreddit is distance socializing but it can be a lot of things it can just be like you know media like, I don't know, I don't know, streaming any more nerds and introverts looking for a social outlet than, like, the Tonight Show is, you know? Mm -hmm. You watch a guy that you kind of feel like you know because you've seen them on TV. Yeah, but with, uh, like, I mean, your streams are pretty popular and the comments go absolutely ballistic, so I'm sure you don't read them, but, um, like, I've streamed a few times and have had pretty legitimate interactions with people just through the comments. And it's not, it's not like just one-sided, like the Tonight Show would be or whatever. And you know what? It's, it, interestingly enough, many of them have actually messaged me privately after. And I've kind of developed some relationships through through streaming, which is interesting. Um, but yeah. Well, man, dude, thank you for, for, for calling in. And um, uh, I appreciate you you being open with us, man. And, uh, and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Cheers. Thank you for the advice. Absolutely, man. You take care, Logan. I love you very much. Love you too, man. Have a good night. I'll be watching. Thanks, bro. Take care. Bye. Call from... Raymond. Raymond! What's up? Uh, you know, not a whole lot. 
No. This is uh the gecko, right? Yes. And this is Raymond. The one and only. And this is Raymond. What are you doing right now, Raymond? Uh, I'm sitting in my room, drawing. What are you, what are you drawing? I like to draw like geometric art mixed with like chaotic swirls. Raymond, I'm not. I'm not question? like a. Yeah. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? Oh, I'm not like a. I, I do art in my free time. You know, I'm not like a. I don't. I don't go to art school or nothing. I think, well, you, well, what do you mean by you're not like a what? Well, what's the end of that sentence? Oh, I'm not a professional. I, I don't, like, I don't, like, I don't know what type of paintbrush to use, you know? I just, I just swing it. Is I'm saying there, I'm, 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 Thing, though, is there a type of paintbrush that, why does that matter, the type of paintbrush? It's not, what, it doesn't. I feel like at a certain point, the mediums and the brushes and the whatever don't matter. All that matters is the the final thing that you put out. Yeah, but I feel like that community is just so guarded, you know? Like, it's like, oh, you have to go to college to be an artist, you know? Well, so I'm what, not trying well, to pose wanna, like What anybody. do you want to do in terms of art? Um, you know, as far as, like, my, my art, my physical art, not too much. Um, I do, I, I did start a screen printing company, which is pretty cool, but I would say I take music even more seriously. But Can I, ask you I have a good me? career right now. What, and, what are you doing? Uh, well, I, I honestly, like, I don't, I don't want to, like, get myself into any trouble. So I'll just say that I have a, I have a good job, very professional job. One that I work very hard for. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Sure. Are you ridiculous? Well, maybe. I, I don't want to be the judge of that. Alright, what do you think might be ridiculous about you? Um, I'm kind of like a halfway hermit. This is, this is like the first personal conversation I've had with anybody in like a year. I keep everything very professional. Really? This is the, this is the most personal conversation you've had in a year? Probably, yes. Unless I'm Why? talking to maybe like the Starbucks lady or something, you know? Right, but you don't really, I mean... Does that bother you? Are you trying to have more personal conversations? Uh, somewhat. You know, I, uh, I, like, I want a girlfriend, you know? I want to I wanna have, like, a, a real life. And it's not that I'm not, like, I'm afraid to talk to people. Because I'm pretty well adjusted. My problem is I just, I really, I, I don't, I don't want to put that time in. Like, I don't, I don't want to deal with other people. I just want to do things exactly my way you know what can you describe exactly your way um exactly my way oh uh, i mean that's pretty broad i'm uh, i i guess i what i'm saying it's inherently is, like, not broad i'm sorry what were you gonna say well no yeah i know what you're saying but um in, in my mind at least it is um, but I, I would just, I, um, I would say that I'm not a very good team worker. You know, I'm not, I'm, a, I can be a good leader and I can work in teams when I, when I'm working on something that I care about, but like, as far as life goes, I, I like, I don't want to, I don't want to have, I don't want to have influence from other people. Like I, you know. You know, I kind of have that myself in in uh, sort of careery terms. But do you would you mm -hmm. say you have that like with career? You have that with like personal relationships. You don't want to work with other people. 
I mean, but you, uh -huh. but you are, but you say that you are craving a relationship. So I mean, what would like, what would your yeah. ideal relationship look like? I gotta be honest. I have no idea. I I haven't thought about that. So, but then in that case, you want something that you don't even really know what it is. Yeah, I would. That's fair to say. So, then what's the sort of the origin of you wanting it? Um, well, there's a couple things. So first thing is, um, I'm the last male with my, with my last name, with my family name. So it either keeps going with me or our family line just, you know, ends. And I know like that it's not, it, that's not exactly how it all will play out, but I'm just saying like that name will be dead. You know, so that's one thing. The other thing is, um, I don't know. I, ju I well, kind of want to. I want to get I, to I the other thing. But first of all, okay, your name sure. being dead. Yeah. How much? Like, be honest with yourself. How much do you yeah. really give a fuck about your name? If the uh, answer is you lot. do, then that's that's fine. Okay, so a lot. A, a lot. Yeah. Why? Um. There, there are a lot of sacrifices that my that name went through. There's a lot of history, and respect. there's a lot of there's a certain amount of success and toughness about that name. Um, I'm not saying like oh ever you know you hear that name and you're like oh he's part of that family like whoa I'm not saying that I'm just saying no, like but personally you have a personal it carries a lot of weight for the for history me. of it. Yes. Do you feel pressure to live up to that? Yeah, I've fought with that all my life. I've Is that from like real, I'm the, Well, so I'm a youngest child. I mean, I'm not so young anymore, but growing up, like it was really tough for me because I was always kind of the screw up. All my family, like, they went on to be doctors and lawyers and teachers, and they did all this cool stuff. And then I was there, and I was, I dropped out of high school. <laughs> and then I went to college, and then I dropped out of that, too. So it was, like, it was always kind of hard for me to, like, be, like, I always felt like a screw-up. Like, ah, got to do something good, you know? Like, you're nothing compared to your family. So yeah, I'm I'm trying to live up to that. But regardless of your fam, I mean, like regardless of your family, and regardless of like mm -hmm. comparing yourself to other people, let's say we're talking about you in your own insular world, in which you know you're a musician and you're an artist. I mean, what? Forgetting about, I mean, if you can, I know it's I know it's hard because it's like so baked into you. But if you can, oh, I know what you're Detach saying, yourself though. for a yeah. second from those expectations and from your family. I mean, what would you say would be what you would want to do. To tell you the truth, well, I haven't been lying to you, but this is just not something I would normally say. But um, my dream is to like have a horse, have a dog, have some livestock, go move out to the woods, you know, and just, just, live out in the woods off the grid you know that's like ultimately that's what i want with my life what do you feel like is stopping you from doing that um well um I, it's just the whole i got time thing like i don't need to do that right now i'm I'm also sure, very sure, sure. career driven. I, I, so it's, but also like, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I, I want that like super bad right now, but I also really want to like have a family in the future. You know, so, it's, like, so it, it's, it's, um, it's hard to say really. I don't know. Yeah, you don't say. I mean, you don't sound super old or anything. 
you know i, I don't know i'm see not why... I'm, I'm pretty young actually yeah i, don't, I mean I don't not see why young, you couldn't young, do that you know. i'm an adult but... yeah i mean but I, I don't i don't see why you know that's 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 something that would be you know un, un, intangible to you no not at all yeah uh yeah it's just it, it, uh, I'm trying to figure out a good way to put this. Um, so please forgive me, but uh, no, go I'm going to just try to put it out there. I, I feel like... Because I, tr I really, truly, truly, truly want to have a family. I want to I want to have a wife. I want to have that life. Um, at the same time, like... I really, really like being alone. And it's not like, oh, I like being alone. Like, I don't go out and party and, you know, I, you know, whatever. Like, I really like being alone. Like, if, yeah. if I had it my way right now, like, I, I wouldn't be, you know, whatever. But at the same time, I'm talking to you right now. So that's kind of weird. I don't know. No, but I, you know, I, I feel, yeah. This is all a bullshit, and I'm not not what you're not what you said, but but uh, like, again, I don't consider myself knowledgeable about shit or anything, but like, I do feel like there are pressures. I mean, you've you've de you've described pressures of your family, you've described pressures of like society, you've described all these different pressures that are kind of maybe, and I don't want to put this on you. This is just sort of a hypothesis, but it's like, are these pressures maybe? leaning you in the direction of not wanting to be alone even though you know truly what you want is to be alone and also you have so much time you have so much time like like you might meet someone who you like being with more than you like being alone but you just don't you have no you have no fucking idea what that feels like because you've never felt it anymore but mm. you but you have so much time to like experiment you know yeah no i absolutely i like i absolutely agree with that it's definitely that's definitely a part of that like but i i truly feel like something in me like really wants to have a partner but i just i, I don't know it's like um it's It's, it's weird because it's so conflicting, you know, um, that I could have those two feelings at the same time. Uh, but uh, when it's been really tough is when, uh, when um, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to go date somebody. Like, I'm going to go try to find a girlfriend. And then, like, a week before, I, I, I like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to, you know, the bar or whatever. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And then I get pissed off at myself. I'm like, yo, why did you do that? Like, it's just, like, conflicting. Right, but, it, right, but, but why, there's no re, but, like, the fact that you have, like, the number, I think the number one thing, the number one is sort of, uh, uh, I want to say variable in this situation is that you have time like you like why be pissed yeah. off at yourself why be why why be pissed off at yourself the fact that you tried to meet someone why be pissed off at yourself there's no there's no log it's illogical like like you tried you could go out and fuck and just non-stop try to meet people for two years you can fucking go out and stop and just trying to meet people for a decade and then uh, when you're like 50 be like you know what fuck all this shit i'm gonna go live to the woods and then you get to be happy for 30 years until you die. I'm just saying, like, time is super on your side for you to kind of figure this this, this this stuff out, you know? I mean, you could even try to live in the woods alone for a year. And if you love it, you can stay. And if you don't, you can go meet new people. I mean, I'm, I know that the way I'm talking about it makes it sound like, oh, it's so easy. And I know it's not to just up and leave life like that. But you have what enough you're talking time. About, you have enough time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would. I. I just want to go back to like being the youngest growing up in a world like that. Like, 
Uh, this is ingrained into my head, and I like whether this right or wrong that I think this. I have no idea, but it, nobody's really going to convince me that I'm like. Maybe someday, maybe I'll change my thinking. But right now, like I really believe in what I'm about to say, and that is that. I need to be as successful as possible, as soon as possible, and I need to be better than everybody. And it's not that I don't want to put other people down or I look down on other people. It's just like I, I, I'm, I need to, like I, I really, really need to be better than everybody. And um, like going through school, like I was. I was a screw up, and then because I don't, dude, <laughs> I've never actually gone into this. So it's hard. You man, you can you can take you can take your time and um like you know you I mean uh you know you can. Uh, if 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 it makes you feel better to to go through with this, you know I'm 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 totally down to hear it. All right, well, I'll do it. Um, so when I was in high school, like, I got I, I got good grades if I wanted to. And I, I took hard classes and I cared about things. But also, um, after a while, like, I started hanging out with bad people and, um, some stuff happened in my home life, so I was, I was like fucking up. And then, um, I always had that compete you know, about against my older siblings' attitude about things. Like I, I had to be better than these guys. And then at that point, I dropped so low that it felt like, oh well, I can't come back from that. Like, might as well go deeper. And then it got to the point where it was just like, well. You know, this sucks. So I, uh, I was like, okay, well, I got to find a way out of this. So what I decided to do was like, I'm going to leave high school and just go to college. And so that's what I did. And I think it was my sophomore year. And, um, after a year of that, I just decided this wasn't quick enough. Like it was taking too long. And so I left college and uh, entered a trade school and uh, just got it over with and joined a uh, a field. And like now my main concern is just like moving up, like get a better job, get a better job. And uh, I don't know, I'm I'm kind of lost right now. I'm sorry. No, don't don't be sorry. I. Yeah, I, I I understand. Like, my only thing, the only thing that would concern me, and like, like, dude, I'm honestly, I'm 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 kind of like that too. Like, I, I'm very like success driven, and I always feel like I need to be doing something, you know. And my life is like better when I'm, when I'm doing something. I I feel like it's again, yeah. people are wired very differently. I also, you know, live pretty insularly, and I also try really hard to like always be doing something, you know. But, um, and I don't think you should shame yourself for that. That said, I do feel like for your own benefit, you should be cognizant of, like, where those intentions are born from, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's why, you know. I, um, that's definitely part of the reason why I'm, like, unsure about this whole thing is because I, I know for a fact that that does not come from a good place for me. Um... So what? Uh, like I, it's like okay, yeah, I'm 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 making money. Um, it's good. My like things look good, but like, could this actually be very unhealthy? You know. Well, what, well, why do you want to be better than everyone else? Is it like because you want to prove people? I think if you want to prove people wrong, it's a shitty reason. But if you just want to like, 
if you enjoy the process of self-actualization and moving towards that, then, then I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you're doing it for like other people, then I would just, I, I, I would just not, not, I'm not saying that you're doing this. I would just say that like, it's important to be, you know, constantly keeping that in check. Um, it's, it's honestly because I want to be better than people. Like I want to be better than everybody else. I guess part of it might be like I want to prove people wrong, but I, I don't feel like I really have anything to prove to anybody. Um, but I, I do really like I want to, in my mind, be better than everybody else. Um, and right now I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not. So, and I, I don't know if I'll ever reach that point where I actually like am satisfied where with where I am and like do it would am I better than anybody because like oh, fuck dude I, I just like right now like I'm like the way I see myself in the world is like you're lower than dirt you know like I'm not I'm not anywhere yet like this like, you're still a fuck up you know so whether or not I'll just stay right here, no matter how far I move up, like, I don't know, but um, that's the goal, is to be better, the best. Ow, fuck. Um, dude, I think, um, again, man, I would say, this, this will be, you know, because again, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I've, I've I have I I've I've, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed having this conversation. I don't want to posture myself too much as like a guy who actually knows shit or gives advice in any way, shape, or form. But I'll say, um, you know, I think that could be some, something that that is you know worth working on is trying to um, switch the gears on those intentions from like, you know doing things for other people yeah. and just trying to be the best because you want to be the best for yourself. You want to be the best version of yourself. You know, I mean, there's a cliche of like, you know, the only person you're really in competition with is who you are yesterday. And it, but it, it's true, you know, so I would focus, try to try to focus more on that mindset than, than the mindset of, um, doing it because you want to be better than other people. Well, I want, I want to say something really quick, just because sure. that probably made me sound like it really bad person no i don't uh, think it did at all what i'm saying right now is this is like this is very true this is how i honestly feel it's like when i say like i want to be better than everybody else i'm not saying like when i see other people that i'm i i think they're worse than me i don't think anybody's worse than me um like to me when i see most people like i put myself below them like like I, I'm not, I'm not claiming to be superior or anything. Um, yeah, no, you, I, I, and I, I respect everybody, and I'm not saying anybody's incapable of being like me. Like I'm, I, I'm not like a. No, I don't think I don't think I don't think you I don't think you sound any um um. I, I, I don't narcissist. think I'm not I'm trying I don't not think to. You sound like a narcissist. I, mean, I don't think you sound like a okay, narcissist thanks. at all. I totally I understand. <laughs> I, I've, I've I've had what you are talking about i understand it i don't think you're a narcissist at all um, okay totally i know what you're saying this is a battle that you're having with yourself i don't think it you're you're yeah you, you don't you don't you don't remotely sound like a narcissist um Thanks. <laughs> but yeah man i, I uh, that that'll be the that that's kind of if i had to leave you with like an actual sort of thing it would be like i think you should try to focus on your intentions for life coming from yourself as opposed to other people. I dig it. I dig it. How do you feel, man? I know you haven't really talked to people in a long time. Uh, well, since there's a certain anonymity to this, like, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Mm-hmm. 
at the same time, like, it is, like, strange. Uh, uh, normally, I would have this dialogue in my head. Um, it's, it's definitely really strange to have this conversation out loud with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also, the other thing is, like, all right, first of all, I like what you do. This is tight as fuck, dude. I'm about to follow you on everything. Like, oh, thank you, man. For real. So, like, uh, but I, I just opened up Reddit. Like, I never go on Reddit. So I just opened up Reddit, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, that dude's kind of cool. You know? It's pretty sweet. So, um, it's a little shocking that, like, I, I literally just saw you like 10 minutes ago and now I'm like talking to you. I know. It's strange it's, for it's, me. It's, it's interesting. You know, yeah. yeah, I started doing this in quarantine and I've talked to way more people than I ever did when the world was not locked down. Also, <laughs> which has been ironic, That's pretty sweet. but, but dude, again, man, thank you for calling in and, um, you know, I, ho- I hope to talk with you again and, uh, Keep, keep going, man. I, 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 you know, everything you've said is like, you know, I, I, I have like, you know, I have a lot of what you said in me as well. And I totally don't think you're a narcissist. I totally, um, am rooting for you, uh, you know, as you try to switch those intentions. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, this has been, um, both a, uh, a fun, um, entertaining, and also strange experience, uh, but overall a good one. So thank you. Absolutely, man. I'm happy to hear that. Um, I hope you have a good night, and I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, take care. Take care, Brian.